Our praise team will sing a prayer song. Then it will be followed by a prayer of adoration and confession. After this first prayer, the congregation will be given two to three minutes to pray by twos. After that, the concluding prayer of thanksgiving and supplication. Then the praise team will sing again another song to conclude our prayer session. For your personal prayer, we are all also encouraging you to pray using the Acts format. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. First, you give praises to God Almighty. Next, confess, your, confess and repent your sins. Then, thank the Lord for all the blessings you've received. And lastly, this is your time to lay down at God's feet your requests, concerns, and troubles. Let me read from the writing of Mrs. Ellen G. White, Patriarchs and Parapets, page 213, paragraph 1. Meanwhile, Joseph with his captors was on the way to Egypt. He saw his angry brothers and felt their fierce glances bent upon him. The stinging, insulting words that had met his agonized entreaties were ringing in his ears. With trembling heart, he looked forward for the future. What a change in situation, from the tenderly cherished son to the despised and helpless slave. Alone and friendless, what, what would be his lot in the strange land to which he was going? For a time, Joseph gave himself up to uncontrolled grief and terror. But in the providence of God, even this experience was to be a blessing of him. To him. Shall we all kneel for prayer? Our Father God, we praise you for the gift of life that you have given us through Lord. We praise you for waking us up every morning to face a new day to celebrate your love and goodness. We praise you, dear Lord, for giving us the best gift anyone could ever give us, and that is your love and the death of your Son, your only Son, on the cross for us. We praise you, dear Lord, for being our almighty Father, comforter, friend, for always being there for us whenever we needed you, and for teaching us, dear Lord, sometimes even if we needed the hard way. We praise you for all the blessings that you give us day by day, and we know, dear Lord, that we are unworthy to receive your love, but yet you still give it to us. We would like to say sorry this afternoon and ask for forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed against you. We apologize, dear Lord, and would like to repent for the misbehavior that we show in your very church, dear Lord. We apologize for not listening keenly enough to your sermons, for not being that committed to you and to our relationship with you. And most of all, the Lord, we apologize for all the little things that we do. And we consider them as nothing, but deep in our hearts, we know that they are sins, dear Lord. This afternoon, as all of us offer our individual prayers to you, Lord, you are the one who knows our hearts. May you please cleanse us and make us pure again, dear Lord. During this week of prayer and even after, may you please create in us a stronger yearning for you and your word. And may each of us experience that this afternoon as we come to you in prayer.
Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this very day that you've given to us, Lord. For uh, you've kept us alive for this day, Lord. We thank you for everything that we have, Lord, for the good things, also the bad things, Lord. We give you uh, thanksgiving for everything that you've given to us, Lord. Also, Lord, uh, thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to go on with our week of prayer. Lord, uh, with this activity, this meaningful activity, Lord, may you bless each and every heart that is present here, Lord, in this venue. Lord, uh, guide the, uh, the, uh, the, those who will be facilitating the activity, Lord, uh, please guide us throughout this activity, Lord. Uh, may you open the hearts, Lord, of those who will be listening to your message for this day. Lord, um, we give you the highest praise. Lord, we give it back to you, the highest thanksgiving, Lord, glory. Lord, they all belong to you, Lord. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time just drifts away, and as I look back on the years, memories of happiness and bitter tears, through it all I said, it cannot be ignored, you were there teaching me to be your servant. Thank you. 
All right, good afternoon, everybody. I had the pleasure of spending some time with some of you today or this morning, and it was awesome. It kind of like revived the youth spirit in me, right? It, it's so amazing how some things change, but it's also powerful how some things just don't change. I can guarantee you, though, you're a much better student than I was when I was sitting in one of these pews. And so this afternoon, we're going to spend just a few minutes, because I know you're just tired, you know, today just went out. It's that kind of Monday. But I want you to, during this time, if you can just carve it out and allow your heart to be reached out by God. As we discuss the topic, sell out. Please bow your heads for prayer. Lord, as we open your word, we come before you with humble hearts. But then some of us also come before you with heavy hearts. And for whatever reason it is, Lord, that you have brought us here this afternoon, may we simply allow ourselves to be transformed by your words. May your love penetrate within us so that we can't help but share it to others for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I want to make it clear. When I asked you earlier to get in trouble with me, it only applied to during the hour of our week of prayer session. So when I ask you to take out your phones, please don't take your phones throughout the day. It's just during the time that we're in here because I wanted you to use your phones if you didn't have the Bible. But if you have your Bibles with you, I also ask you to open those Bibles and flip to the pages as today we're going to spend time still in Genesis chapter 37, uh, this time in verses 18 through 28. So if you have your Bibles with you, take them out right now. Open them to chapter, chapter 37 of Genesis, and we're going to go right into the Word of God. If you're there, say amen. All right, some of you are still working on it. I'll give you a few seconds. It's Genesis. Yeah, some of you are just staring at me. Open your Bibles. Don't stare at me. It makes me feel like I'm good looking. I don't want you to give me that false hope. Go ahead and open your Bibles. Let's get used to going into the Word of God, not only in spending what it has to do with us, but spending in what it says it is for us. All right, this time around, if you're in Genesis chapter 37, say amen. All right, much better. I'm starting at verse 18. This is how the Word of the Lord says, Joseph's brothers saw him coming from far away. Before he reached them, they made plan to kill him. Verse 19, they said to each other, Here comes that dreamer. Let's kill him and throw his body into one of the wells so we can tell our father that a wild animal killed him. Then we will see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard their plan and saved Joseph by saying, Let's not kill him. Don't spill any blood. Throw him into this well here in the desert, but don't hurt him. Reuben planned to save Joseph later and send him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they pulled off his robe with long sleeves and threw him into the well. It was empty and there was no water in it. While Joseph was in the well, the brothers sat down to eat. When they looked up, they saw a, gro a group of Ishmaelites traveling from Gilead to Egypt. Their camels were carrying spices, balm, and myrrh. Then, Joseph, then Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and hide his death? Let's sell him to these Ishmaelites 
then we will not be guilty of killing our own brother. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood, and the other brothers agreed. Have you tried selling something before? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, we got some sellers in the house. Hopefully you weren't selling bad stuff, right? But on this campus, I shared with some of you today that this was where I was born and raised. Actually, I was born at the old PUC campus that was still in Baeza in Manila. My parent, my dad, was especially one of the first students who moved from Baeza to this campus. And during that time, all we had was apartments A and B, which I'm told is going to change uh, letters, this building, and the old elementary school. That was all there was on this campus, at least that I could remember. And during that time, we would have typhoons, strong typhoons in this area. And when I was in elementary, my mom would always make this, um, I don't know what it's called in Tagalog, but I think in Bisa it's called shakoy. So it's this breaded, it's this piece of bread that's twisted around and rolled in sugar. And because there would be no electricity during that time, there would be no school, there would be no activities, my mom would make this shakoy and would tell my brother and I to sell it. And so we would go to all the dorms. Back then, all we had was Cadena de Amor, Sampaguita, Nara Hall, which I think now is Mahogany, and Malavi Hall. And so we would go to all those dorms and would sell our shakoy. And the first one to come back with the empty basket of the shakoy pretty much gets an extra pay from my mom. So we would sell things. So at an early age, I already understood that selling was to the advantage of the seller. Here, we see a story of Joseph who is being sold. Now, hopefully, nobody here has experienced being sold literally by somebody they love, especially their siblings, right? Hopefully, you have been, been sold like that. But there's a different kind of selling that we're also going to talk about, which is sell out. I think in Tagalog, one of the ways that we can define this word sell out is the word pinagsamantalan, taken advantage of for the gain of others. If we go back to verse 18 of this chapter, it goes by saying that Joseph's brothers saw him from far away, and before he reached them, they planned to kill him. Are you understanding what's going on right now? Joseph is planned to be killed. I hope you have not experienced what that's like. I think my buddy over here experienced what it's like to be, called, to be sold out, right? When you get sold, your value is no longer determined by you. When people sell you out, trust is broken. From a distance, Joseph's brothers knew that they were already going to do him harm so bad that they wanted to kill him. How many of you have experienced somebody wanting to kill you? I hope now no one. At least I haven't. Maybe somebody have threatened me in a, in a rough way, you know, saying, uh, I'll kill you. But hopefully they weren't meaning that in a literal sense. But here, we're talking about Joseph's brothers literally. Like literally wanting to kill Joseph. And so they said, if we kill him, let's see how his dream is going to come about. Verse 20, let's kill him and throw his body into the wells, and then we can tell our father that a wild animal killed him. Let me pause here real quick. Many times, students, 
You may not plan to kill somebody physically, but the words you say about the other person to another person is just like killing that person. Talking behind their back. Saying something that's not true. Right? Chica. Is that still a thing? Especially when somebody likes this guy and this guy ends up paying attention with somebody else and you start saying something bad about that individual just so that guy thinks differently of that person and will start thinking better of you. These are the times that are calling for sellouts and the words you say are actually what kills a person. May not be literally, but it kills that person. And when you decide to do something bad, the next thing you do is just to do another bad. And the example of Joseph's brother showed it. They plan to kill him. They plan to throw him into the well to hide what they just did. And then they were planning to lie about the whole situation, to lie to their father that they killed their brother. But then Reuben heard their plan and wanted to save Joseph in verse 21. Let me pause for a second. No matter how much trials you go in your life, God puts individuals in your life to save you. They could be your kuya. They could be your ate. They could be a teacher. They could be a best friend. They could be a cousin. It's somebody who God has put in your life to save you from a potential harm that's coming your way. What you need to do, however, is pay attention who these people are and give them respect and show them that you appreciate them. After Joseph heard about this, he said, don't kill him. And then Joseph had a plan that after they would throw Joseph, uh, no, Reuben, Joseph's bro oldest brother, had a plan that after they would throw Joseph into the well, later on, he would bring Joseph back out and give him back to his father. But they ended up throwing him, and before he could say, before Reuben could save Joseph, there was a bunch of Ishmaelites. But before he was thrown, they stripped Joseph off of his long coat. Remember this morning we were talking about the significance of this coat? Is it a wonder that in Scripture they took time to describe the coat again? It is because it wants us to remember that Joseph had a special status in this family and that status was ripped off by the very brothers who were meant to protect him, to care for him, and look after him. Keep in mind, Joseph was a younger brother to all of these guys. See, I don't know what that, that's like to have older siblings because I'm the eldest. But I have a cousin who's older than me. I have friends who are older than me. I have non-relative kuyas and ates that I had growing up. And I trusted them, and they, in turn, cared for me. But can you imagine the very people who are supposed to care for you are now the very people who are about to kill you and, or sell you? Selling you out like they are to gain something from it. And so when Judah saw that there were these Ishmaelites coming in verse 27, he said, then we will be guilty of killing our brother if we killed him. And so let's just sell him. And so the, all the other brothers agreed. And in verse 28, it says, So when the Midianites traders came by, the brothers took Joseph out of the well and sold him to the Ishmaelites for eight ounces of silver, and the Ishmaelites took him to Egypt. The first major downward spiral of Joseph's life is captured in the verses we just read this afternoon. In the first few verses, we see a dramatic change in the life of Joseph. Now, you, ask, you probably ask yourself, what is the connection of this it's all good title or theme to the scriptures that we've been reading so far? 
And my goal and my prayer is that through the life of Joseph, you will realize that whether life is good or life is bad, when you choose God, it's all good. It's all good. That is the goal this week. Because some of you are here today, you're probably nodding off because you're tired, you're falling asleep, or maybe you're smiling because you've had a good day today. Or maybe you're not so feeling well today, and so you're just struggling and trying to make it today. Whatever your experience is, there is something that happens when you trust God. There is something that happens when you choose God. And in the life of Joseph, no matter what happened, and we will discover more throughout this week, no matter what happened in his life, Every time he had the opportunity, he chose God. As I shared with you this morning, I have a brother. He's a younger brother. His name is Donald. So Donald and I were fortunate enough to have something that you enjoy when you live on this campus, and that's a motorcycle, right? So he had a motorcycle, I had a motorcycle. But these motorcycles were only allowed to be used 